Hi everyone, it's Sue here for Wellness Wednesday. And how many of you can sit on the floor, crisscross applesauce, as my grandson likes to say, pretty comfortably? I hear a lot of times, especially lately, because we're doing so much extra sitting, we're doing so much uh, more sedentary activities that it's getting harder and harder. In fact, some of you might not get down on the floor at all. So let me show you a couple little tricks and then I'm gonna show you a really common stretch series that we do in yoga a lot, especially for beginners, using something like a strap. Now this is a yoga strap. You've probably seen one of these before and this one I put a loop in it for, I was using it for something else, but I'm gonna use it today to show you. But you can use anything. You can use a belt, uh, you can use a rope, you can use a scarf, anything you have at home that you can actually hold with two hands. Okay, so let me show you a little trick that I'm doing right now. I'm sitting on a blanket, <laughs> a little yoga trick. So if I come off of the blanket and I just sit here, you might be able to tell, this is a little bit of a baggier outfit I have on today, but here's the top of my pelvis. Would you say that my knees are above my pelvic rim? They slightly are. And what happens when your knees are high like this, especially if they're higher, it does two things. It pushes you backward. So your core body has to contract in order to hold you here. Most people don't like to sit like that. Why I don't want you to sit like that is because when you do that with your core body so that you don't fall over, you can't breathe very well because it restricts your breathing. So if you're ever sitting on the floor, wanting to sit on the floor in a yoga class and the teacher tells you to sit on the floor, get something to sit up on. And then look, look how my legs relax. Now they're resting on my feet. They are definitely below my pelvic rim. And guess what? This is not all contracted. This happens a lot when we sit in a chair. We don't even realize it, but we're a little bit slumped over and slumped back. And this is restricted and contracted. This gets all contracted and we can't move around very well. So I'm gonna show you a really simple yoga stretch that you can do at home. I would suggest daily, especially if you have this issue. Okay, it's done laying down or lying down. Ideally, you're on a firm surface. You could do this on a bed, but it doesn't, unless your bed is really, really firm, you're not gonna get the right action in your body. So get used to being on the floor. I just recently told a class uh, when I was in the personal training world and I used to go to people's homes, there were two things that I noticed really contributed to um, lower functioning, uh, less quality of movement throughout their day, um, lower ability to do what they wanted. And you know what the two things were? A house without stairs and them never getting down on the floor because they were afraid to do that. Those two things alone contributed significantly to their well being or not. Little tip for the day. Okay, so we're lying on the floor here. You're gonna start with your legs bent and I want you to get in a comfortable position. I don't necessarily care that your legs are straight or not. I'll give you that option in a minute. And I want you to take your strap, I'm gonna use my loop, and I want you to put it around the base of your right foot. Now what I don't want you to do is put it right in the middle of your foot. Decide around the heel or around the ball of your foot. If you have something with a loop in it, it's easy for me to hold this. If you don't, just hold it in each hand. Now, right away, most people bend their knee because they think they have to bring the leg up closer. What I'd like you to do is extend the leg so that the leg is straight here. My right buttocks is down on the floor. My right foot is reaching up into the strap and my arm is just lightly holding it. So you can do it this way or you can slide your leg down to do it this way. This makes it a little bit harder. 
If your hamstrings, the backs of your legs are really tight, your foot's gonna probably be more like here. And if you're super flexible, you might get way past where I am. Where it is doesn't matter. What's important is you feel a nice, healthy stretch in the back of your leg. And you stay here for five or six breaths. The second one that we're gonna do is you're gonna turn your foot a little bit outward and you're gonna bring the leg out to the side, nice and slow. And you can see I'm bending my elbow here. And ultimately, I might be able to let my um, elbow rest on the floor. And I get a good, healthy stretch now on the inner side of my leg. My other side body is resting on the floor. The leg is down, the buttocks is down, the shoulders are down. And if that feels impossible this way, bend this other leg and let that knee kind of drop out to the side to help counterbalance you. Also support yourself on the floor. And you stay here for five or six breaths. And then you lift your leg back up. The last one we're gonna do is a crisscross. So what I'd like you to do to protect your lower back is hop your hips over to the right if you're holding your right foot. Hop them over to the left if you're holding your left foot. Slide the leg down and switch your hands. Now this arm's gonna go out on the floor. You're gonna turn the foot over and you're gonna to start to lift your bottom off the floor to rotate all the way over. Now, you can see I ran into my wall. So I could rest there and I can extend this leg. Remember, I want a long leg. I don't want it to be bent. And again, a good healthy stretch along the side of the leg and up into the buttocks area here. You might even feel it in your lower back. A little, just a little tip is if you're tight, your top of your hip's gonna move up towards your waist and your knee's gonna buckle. I want you to move the leg down if that happens and move the hip away from your waist so that you feel long here. And stay here for five or six breaths. And then you lift yourself back up and then you release it. Now, the fun part is to come back in the middle and put both legs completely down and rest for a minute. And what I want you to notice what I want you to feel is the difference between the leg you just did and the leg that you haven't done yet. There might be a significant difference. So let's do the other side. Start with bent knees. Wrap the strap around the ball or the heel of your foot, not the middle. And then find a way to hold it. So remember, you can hold it with two hands here. You can hold it just with one hand. If you've got it looped, some people like to do this motion or wrap it around this way. Remember that the left hip or the hip that you're stretching is down on the floor and the leg is extended. So if you lock your knee, everything's gonna be felt behind the knee. So don't do that, but don't bend it either. There's a sweet spot that you can feel. And then decide if you want your leg down or not. Get a nice, healthy stretch in the back of this leg. It's your hamstring. This muscle group is responsible for walking and pushing you forward. So it's kind of important. And while you're holding this, you might rest your left hip even heavier onto the floor. Really get it heavy. Now turn your foot a little bit out to the side and start to bring your leg outward. Remember, I'm gonna run into my wall so I can let my leg rest on my wall. That's a little cheap. But you can also bend your elbow and let your arm rest on the floor. This other side of the body should be pretty quiet. If it feels like you're falling off the floor, if you're starting to fall over, bend this knee and let it come out to the side a little to counterbalance it. Ideally, keep the shoulders quiet and the breath easy. And really focus on now you're on the inner part of the leg. You might notice stuff going up into the knee and along the side of the inner calf. That's normal and completely fine. And then go ahead and lift this leg up. And then decide, okay, I'm going to hop my hips over. That helps protect my lower back. I'm going to switch my hands. And then I'm going to slide the leg down. From there, lift your hip up off the floor and start to guide it slowly 
towards the opposite direction. Now I don't have my wall on this side to stop me, so I could drop the leg all the way down, but this other arm came up and I'm just kind of what we call hanging in the pose. I don't want you to do that. Keep your foot about parallel with your own hip or higher and extend it. So again, your foot might actually go back here if it feels too hard. It might actually come up a lot closer if it feels easier. Move your hip away from your waist. Move it away and breathe. Good healthy stretch means it's slightly uncomfortable. You can feel something's happening, but it does not hurt. Okay, once it goes into a pain threshold, the body will start to contract to protect itself. So don't go there. Inhale, both, uh, bring your leg back up. Release your foot, bring your hips back to the center, and then go ahead and put both legs back down again. And now what I want you to notice is, do both legs feel about the same? They should, ideally. When you're ready to come up, bend your knees and roll over. So what I'd like you to understand is the, those three actions we just did target the area of the front and the back and the inner and the outer leg, which ultimately work up around the hip. So that when you go to sit down the next time, you might notice that your legs are more relaxed. Can you see how mine are? They're more relaxed. I still would like to sit up on my blanket, but they are definitely better. Simple stretch, do it every day, and you might really feel a lot better when you sit. Have a great day, and I hope to see you again real soon.